Hey, we're live. Hey. <laughs> Welcome back to the Mama Mouse Club. We are four moms that love Disney, and we meet every other Thursday to talk Disney. Yeah. And uh, this week we are talking budgeting tips for your next Disney trip. And also we are announcing our giveaway winner. So stay tuned to the end where we're going to pick the name out of a hat, the old school way. <laughs> <laughs> giveaway. Maybe we should start also giving away a hat. You get the know, name right? out of a hat and a hat. Yeah. <laughs> <That'll work. laughs> Yeah, maybe we could do every other week, every other time, like a hat or ears, yeah. just want to wear on your head. <laughs> so, how's everybody doing tonight? I'm good. I'm I'm planning for my trip to Disney. We leave on Saturday. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting! And Heather's at Disney. Yeah, yeah. I'm at Disney. I don't know how to change look. Oh, can there you guess what she is? That is gorgeous. Please. Yeah, it is. So how do you You're feel not, about roughing it at Disney, Heather? Like, I'm what's still your... a wilderness lodge girl. That is never going to change. It is fun. It is fun. And the girls are loving it. But I am still a wilderness lodge girl. <laughs> I'm, I'm for the cabin all the way. I love the cabin. Just because you get to have the golf cart yes. and everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and you got the new tie-dye ears, too. They're so pretty. They are so pretty. I was like searching for them. And then um, Magic Kingdom, I asked one of the cast members, I was like, is there any left? She goes, I don't think so. And then she checked in the back and she was like, there's two pair back there. And she brought one out and I was like, ring them up. <laughs> Where did so you we go in Magic Kingdom to find these? At the I'm Emporium. At the Emporium? Okay. <laughs> Ooh. They're so perfect for Easter. I know. They really are. They like change colors. So we got Chris in the chat, my husband, and we got Irene's husband in the chat. We also got um, Holly Molly in. Welcome. It's like and mom's on screen, dad's in the chat. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> the kids are just doing whatever. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to figure out how to show. Oh, there. That's how you show a comment. You <laughs> we, we love the cabin. That's like our favorite resort. Really? Uh -huh. Yes. Because... They're just, it's the only place you can, we drive. So it's the only place you could actually park your car at uh, your room. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, then that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> I've only stayed at the cabins at Fall, at, at Fort Wilderness, at Wilderness Lodge. Those mm -hmm. cabins oh. are fancy. Oh. That's the like next <laughs> level. <laughs> they are. Yeah. Those cabins are nice. <laughs> oh, Crafty Kendra, welcome in. Yeah. Good Hello. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> so, do All you right, want to? So Jump! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's start. So we have four questions. Each of us have a question about you know budgeting for Disney, and yes. I think we're going to start with Heather's question. Heather had a great question that we can all answer. Heather, so your... my, my question was, um, if and when we're just going to leave it at when when the dining <laughs> plan comes back. Um, a lot of people are against it. Some are for it. But at what point do you think that it's actually worth it to get the Disney dining plan? And we're talking about the regular Disney dining plan, not quick yes. service. So like one table service, one quick service, two snacks. What, at what point do you think that it is worth it to get the dining plan? There's an answer. <laughs> so I can start. Mean, you want to start? Yeah. So we've done the dining plan quite a few times. The first time we did it, we got it free. Um, when they do their like free dining plan promo. So for sure, if that's going on, it's definitely worth taking advantage of. Um, but then we have purchased it a couple times as well. And I've always like done the math and I've read all the things online and like tried to figure out the best way to do it. And so for me, I think there's like two key points. I think if there's a festival going on in Epcot, which pretty much there is all the time now, <laughs> um, a lot of the menu items qualify for snack credits. So if you're planning on going to Epcot, you're going to do the festival, you like to eat that kind of food, like the festival food, I think it's definitely worth it to have the dining plan and you do snack credits for that. And if you drink alcohol, I think it's another yep. huge plus. So we, we love to go into the quick service at Mexico and you can get a margarita as your drink with your quick service meal for the day. What? So margaritas like Fourteen dollars. Yeah. So if you're getting a fourteen dollar drink plus your entree, 
you are way beyond maximizing your quick service mm -hmm. credits. Um, yeah. And then really knowing which like places to go. So like any character meal that's not two credits for a sit down is definitely worth it. So like Tusker House is a great one. Of course, when characters come back. Right. To, to mm -hmm. um, Crystal Palace is a good one. So just kind of knowing which ones. Um, if you do dinner at the Beach Club at Cape May, that one's like super maximizes a sit down dining credit because it's like all you can eat seafood. I like was piling my plate, plate full oh, of crab man. legs. <laughs> so that one's totally worth it. Um, so if you if you do the research and you like to eat and you're planning on doing like a sit down meal every day, if you have kiddos and you want to do character dining and you're willing to kind of go the extra effort on your snack credit. So pretty much anything like five dollars or up is going to be a good value on a snack credit. Um, we've definitely even with doing that, we still ended up having to buy a couple like Rice Krispie bars on the last day to bring home. But you can also do the like bags of candy and they're like six fifty seven bucks. And that's a really good value. And then you also have a souvenir to bring home. So I, I think the dining plan is well worth the value, but you do need to be planning on like eating a lot of food. And if you're smart about using your snack credits and you're going to order alcoholic beverages with your quick service and table service, I think it's well worth it. <laughs> Great awesome. tip. I didn't know that about the Epcot festivals um, that, yeah. that counts as snacks. We had some people join the chat. We have Chelsea, yeah. Chelsea Snow Creations is in. Um, I saw Happily Ever, Af Happily Ever Edwards join. Welcome in guys. Aileen, anybody else on this? Um, I thought I saw one other person come in. And the, uh, the men are making their own dad's club. <laughs> Mark from Fun and Fancy Free joined. Oh yeah, Dinamar. Right yeah. So I think that's right. everybody. What about you, Jean-Claire? So I have not yet done the dining plan. I know on our last trip to Disney, we had a large party. We had, there were eight of us and we had a split stay and we were tossing around doing the dining plan versus not doing the dining plan. And we ultimately decided not to do the dining plan because just the way my family eats, mm -hmm. like uh, because the dining plan with the snack credits would have been great, but having kind of that, that one sit down meal. So we thought about doing it because we would have had that one sit down meal, but then we had like kids with us and then we had people who didn't eat certain things and it just got to be, uh, it would it would have been a waste. So what I did was because on DVC, I was able to get the tables in Wonderland card, yeah. which gave you 20% off, which if you have a party as large as ours, you're getting automatically tipped at 18%. So you have an 18% gratuity. So the way I looked at it, was that the tables and Wonderland card provided us with um, free gratuity, which when you're sitting down for eight people at a meal, that's 50 bucks a person, <laughs> you know, that gratuity is like another 18% yeah. gratuity. That's another almost hundred bucks. So to have that not on your bill at the end was completely worth it. So that's how we save money. We actually save more money that way because if you're um, if you have a pass holder, if you pass holder or if you're DVC, you usually get about a 10% discount, but it's limited to the number of people that you can use the discount for, and you can't use it on alcoholic beverages. Whereas in Tables in Wonderland, you can use it for up to 10 people, and it's 20% off of everything, including alcohol. So you basically get your gratuity free, and then 2% off your your meal. That seems so worth it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I think the card itself was like a hundred and fifty dollars. Um, after we did Ohana dinner our very first night, there were eight of us for Ohana dinner, and so I think after that one Ohana dinner, the card paid for itself. Mm -hmm. in, terms wow. of, in terms of what we would have paid in gratuity, probably maybe two dinners. We were there for a whole week. And yeah. so, and then it's good for a whole year. And, you know, when they closed the parks, they actually extended everybody's passes and they also extended the tables in Wonderland card, which is unfortunate because I couldn't find my card on our last trip. And I was kicking oh, no. myself every time because we, we did like nothing but character meals on our last trip. Uh -huh. And every time I went to pay the bill, all I could think was, 
I would have gotten twenty percent off. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. But I found my card. I found my card. And that's the thing. If you have a Tables in Wonderland card, take a picture of your card on your phone mm. because. Oh, yeah. They cannot find your card. I don't know what kind of old school system that they use with this Tables in Wonderland card, but I went to guest services and they were like, do you have the credit card you used to pay for it? I was like, I'm pretty sure I do, but do I know which one it was? That was like a year ago, no. And they're like, well, do you have a picture of the number? Like we can get it if you have, I'm like, well, if I have the number, then do I need the card? Like, <laughs> I wouldn't be here if I had a picture of the card. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like okay. they do it in an old school way and you actually have to have the card. There are a couple of blackout dates, but there aren't that many. Okay. It's like New Year's, Christmas, Easter, but it's not like Easter, it's not like the annual pass holder blackout dates where it's like a two week period. It's just like usually the day before, maybe the day of, or the day after. Awesome. So that's um, what we so I've, I've also never got the, the dining plan. We've never, like we've looked like once or twice, but we actually usually end up staying in an Airbnb, so we have our own kitchen. So it doesn't like it never like made sense to us because we usually like cook our own breakfast, we cook our own dinners, we get like a quick service in the park. So it doesn't really end up fitting our budget. So if I would recommend if you're staying off property with a kitchen, that you know you don't get the dining plan. I don't think it's gonna, you know, be worth your budget, uh -huh. worth your money. Yeah. What about you, there? <laughs> So um, we are pass holders. So um, unless it's being offered for free, we do not get it anymore. But in terms of clients, I always tell them, what type of trip do you want to have? And all the parents always say, oh, I want to have character meals. I want my kids to see the princesses and I want to see Mickey and Minnie, all that kind of stuff. If you are doing more than two character meals, the dining mm -hmm. plan pays for itself because on that third meal that is pretty much you getting to almost the point of like say the average one used to be between like it depended how long you would stay between 700 and 1100 dollars yeah. okay Ooh. how many days it was you can go in to be our guest for a family of four and you're coming out of there paying over 200 dollars yep. for your meal yep. your mm -hmm. second yep. meal in 1900 park fair there's another 200 dollars your third meal at Artist Point, you're at like 250. So, oh and that's just factoring in your one table service. That is not factoring in your snacks, and it's not factoring in your quick service. And I always say to people, they always say, "Well, my kids um, eat three meals a day," and I always say, "Take one of your snack credits, go down yeah. to wherever your quick service location is in the morning, use one of those snack credits, and get them something for breakfast." Yep. Like it could be something like a muffin, a bowl of cereal, a donut, some fruit, anything like that, a bagel. Mm -hmm. Use that because you're going to have your quick service for lunch. And then most people use it for dinner because it is the most expensive meal. And then you still have that other snack credit. And where Irene is correct is anything over 550 you're making out because you are not paying for those snacks on the dining plan. Yeah. Right. So, and if you do Epcot, I mean, some of those can get upwards of like 1150. Yeah. So you yep. always go for the more expensive snacks. Like never pick the $5 Mickey pretzel. Go to Epcot <laughs> and pick the thing that costs like 1175. Yeah. And it has the little I, DDP next yep. to it. I always go on Disney food blog and I like, yes. I've, already, I've already done it for the yep. Power and Garden Festival and I have every single item we want to get. I've marked them all, like priced them out. If the dining plan comes back, we probably will do it for our July trip just because we have so many like restaurants we want to do mm -hmm. and we know mm -hmm. we want to do like we know we want to do Topolino Terrace. So and any other character dining if it comes back. So I think it's I think it's worth it. I mean, if you're willing to do it. And then if and you do like like you said, for breakfast, like grab mm -hmm. a muffin or just like order yeah. a box of granola bars from like groceries and then have that for your breakfast and you've still got snacks, you know. Correct. And the is, Disney is expensive. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Disney Everything is. Expensive, but here's the thing. Like when we went on our last trip, we didn't, we, we did, I, I wanted to, it was the three of us. So, so since it was only three of us, I wanted to make sure. And like the, uh, my husband and my son, when they do come, they don't care about character dining. So Zoelle is the only one who cares about mm. character dining. So it was me, her and my mom, we ate at garden grill. That was probably almost two hundred dollars for the three oh, of yeah. us because it's yeah. fifty five dollars per person plus mm -hmm. the gratuity and tax. Yeah. So it was like about one seventy five, and and 
that was one meal. And um, we did Topolino's Terrace for breakfast. And that was probably one of the more expensive breakfast places. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was still, it was a very pricey. I think we spent, I don't think we spent less than 175 on any meal that we did. And we did Garden Grill, Topolino's Terrace, and where's the other place that they have characters right now? There's like one other place where they have mm -hmm. characters. Yeah, okay, I think they've got them like Hollywood and Vine. Vine. Hollywood and Vine. Right. We did Hollywood and Vine. And they, so it, it's, you know, it, it would have worked out if they had the dining plan for us to actually use the dining plan given what we had spent for those meals. So if you're doing character meals, it does make sense. If you're not doing character meals, or if you're not really doing sit down meals and you're just kind of wanting to like foof around the park, maybe yeah. it doesn't make sense. But yeah. then the other thing to remember is people think, I feel like people think snacks and they think like Mickey pretzels, ice cream right. bars, donuts, but there are snacks in Disney that are meals in and of them. Yeah, so, right, sure. yep. You know, you can get barbecue nachos as a snack credit. Yep. And share and it's shareable. So, right. you know, that's the other way to save. Like you don't have to get a meal for every single person, except for when you go to those character dining places, like everybody has to pay uh -huh. if you're gonna eat. Right. But if you go to a quick service location, you can definitely save money by getting a meal and splitting it because sometimes uh -huh. the portions are crazy. Huge. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Huge. Well, and you talked about too, I, don't, I can't remember if you said in here, if it was just when we were talking before, but about doing split stays, right? Yes. And so like, if you have a split stay, it's awesome. Like when we go in July, we're staying at four different hotels over 10 days. And so probably what we'll do if dining plan comes back is pick like which one in there strategically we would want to add the dining plan onto and then yep. prioritize our more expensive meals or sit down meals mm -hmm. like during those days. So that's a great way to do it too. You know, even if you are trying to kind of budget and you know, you want to do some of those character dinings, like do a split stay because all the resorts are fabulous to stay at and it's really fun to get to go to different resorts. So pick like you know four or five nights and then do two or three nights at another resort and then add dining plan onto one of those stays and you can prioritize and do some of those more expensive meals during that time and that's a great mm -hmm. way to save some money too and it's and the reason why we stay in split state oh i just wanted to clarify the reason okay. that we stay to a split state is because when you get the dining plan you do have to purchase yes. it for every day that you're staying on a specific reservation. So that's why we're saying if you do a split staying, like maybe break it up four days here, three days here, or however long you're staying, mm -hmm. then you can buy the dining plan for one portion of your stay and then kind of go a la carte the other portion of your stay because the dining plan kicks in the day you check in all day and until like 11.59 p.m. on the day you check out. Correct. And any of those extra snack credits, like Irene had mentioned, if you do not use them and you're checking out, say you're checking out at three o'clock and you're like, oh my gosh, I still have like four snack credits. Mm -hmm. You hit up the confectionery or like even your hotel and you yep. pick up those $7 bags of snacks and you take them home to people and be like, look what I brought you from Disney. It didn't yep. cost you anything extra. You have the dining plan. <laughs> yeah. yep. Three little souvenirs. Yep. Yeah. Here's your souvenir. Yeah. Look at that price tag on the back. Yeah, that's how, yep. <laughs> that's how much I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Usually I go to those like those souvenir shops on the, you know, like with the wizard and the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what's our next question? I think we're going to go to Ajana Claire. She had a good question. Okay. I just want to make sure there are no questions in the chat before we go on my questions. And are there any more questions for us guys? about the dining plan before we move on to our next question. Yeah, we had Russian to Disney come in. Hey guys, Karki came hey. in. Uh, Tammy came in. Hello, hello. Aileen. I mean, Aileen came in. Danielle from Mickey's Girls. Hello. Hey. Yep, Danielle says they always split meals. It, 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 it is uh -huh. a good one. So yeah. my they question was, where do you stay when you're going to Disney? Um, do you stay on property? Do you stay off property? And and not so much in terms of based on amenities, because we'll do like, that's a whole nother like hour long chat, but in terms of cost, where do you stay? Um, Heather, you want to start? So I- As you're staying right now. <laughs> right, as I always, 
So, the, I mean, and I do think that it depends on what kind of experience you want. I will say that we do own a timeshare that is like literally right at the entrance of Disney. And we probably haven't stated it in over five years. Just because the convenience for us, I mean, living obviously like up north, direct flight from Pennsylvania to Florida, get off, like get on Magical Express. We are on property. We don't have to think about anything, including, well, whenever they bring back Magical Express is going to bring your luggage. That's going to be a game changer again, too. I miss that so much. I really do. (laughs) I don't like doing carry-ons only. This is rough. (laughs) <laughs> um, but for us, it's just so much more convenient because I usually travel multi-generational and it's just easier mm-hmm. that like if my parents are tired or one of the girls are tired, hey, yeah. hop on Disney transportation, go back. I'm going to stay here with like the other one until like midnight tonight. We'll see you later. Not that big of a deal. So I don't have to worry about like who has the rental car and who's coming to pick us back up or anything like that. And do I have to get an Uber or whatnot? So for us, we always stay on property. I mean, I'm in one right now. I don't even know how to <laughs> maneuver the iPad. <laughs> I'm so jealous. I wish I was there. I know. <laughs> That's awesome. What about you, Irene? So we, I mean, we've done everything. So we have DVC. We joined in 2016. So um, our home resort is the Polynesian. So it's a good go-to. Um, we can always book that 11 months out and then switch it up when we get to our seven month window. Um, I mean, we, we bought it because we got a taste of staying at the deluxe resort. So we stayed at, at the beach club resort. And once you stay at a deluxe resort, it's just mm-hmm. like so hard <laughs> to go back. So to go back. They're so fantastic. The resort, the resort itself is amazing. The amenities, the pools. Um, so we do typically stay on property just because we have DVC, but we have done an Airbnb offsite as well. And it just gives a different like feel to your trip. For me, I think we're not close enough to drive. Like if we drove from Colorado, it would be like, like oh, yeah. to the trip is <laughs> four extra days. So driving's not an option for us. If we're gonna have a car, we have to rent it. So there's the extra cost of a rental car. And then there's the extra cost of having to park at the parks. Now, when we had an annual pass, we stayed off site because it was free to park the parks. So then the like cost analysis was, it, it made a little bit more sense to do an off site stay. Um, being DVC, we can also park at DVC resorts with no cost. So that gives us the option of still doing a rental car if we wanna do that or using Disney transportation. So I think for us, we're, we're definitely more on-site people and we've stayed everywhere, value, moderate, deluxe. Um, and we, we love them all really. Um, it's, it's fun to like, when there is a good deal, like right now with the crazy rates that they have, um, we're actually talking about tacking on a couple extra days to our July trip and staying at like one of the moderate resorts because we can't stay. I mean, we could use our DVC points to buy, to stay at those resorts, but it's just not worth the point value. So any chance we do get to like book a stand room, like a value or moderate, we would. And um, the Riviera, or not the Riviera, um, Port Orleans, those are like our favorite hands down non DVC resort. Um, so if those happen to open up before July, we might have to oh, book a couple nights there. I'll be calling Heather and seeing <laughs> seeing if she can give me a couple nights. So I'll work my um, magic. Yeah, I think we're so, probably mostly like we're gonna stay on site if we're doing doing a Disney trip. Everyone's saying they love being in the Disney bubble. They, you know, the convenience yeah, yeah. of it. Everyone in the chat's agreeing with you. And yeah, we all miss Port Orleans so much. <laughs> Oh. Yes, I hope they look it out soon. Also, welcome Jen and Joe on the go. Welcome in. Yeah. Love to see the you. blues ice cream truck just went by. <laughs> That's why I was like looking out the window. I'm like, yeah, ice cream man. We have like this boozy popsicle truck that goes around our neighborhood. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? Oh. That's interesting. <laughs> and he sells like other things too, but he has like box of popsicles. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Uh, what so about like, you, Claire? Okay, so we we've done both. Um, 
I've never stayed at Disney on cash. So that's, that's the difference. Like we, when we planned our first trip, when we became DVC, we were pricing out um, a room at the Art of Animation Resort. And there were, at the time when I was originally planning it, there were only five of us. And then I met my husband, got married, and then it became eight of us so, <laughs> before the trip actually happened. So when I was planning it for just the five, even for just the five of us, I was looking at, you know, it was like, okay, we have four adults, no, six of us, because it was like me, my mom, Zoel, and then my son and his wife and their kids, there's six of us. And we were trying to like stay in like a suite at Art of Animation and it was like 250 a night, but it was like, okay, that's gonna be really tight. Cause even though they have like the bedroom and a pull out yeah. sofa and that pull out Murphy bed, I was like, that's a mm -hmm. lot of people in that small space. Mm -hmm. So then we started looking at, okay, well, let's look at the, the, the hotel rooms. We were to need two hotel rooms you know you have two double rooms for six people you need two rooms so once we started pricing that out in with the two rooms it would have cost it no i think the suite was like five something a night the rooms were two something a night and once we priced it out for the week for two rooms versus the suite it was like almost six thousand dollars or four thousand dollars and so i was like well let me just, and then I was like, well, I want to stay in some place with a kitchen. Like, let's, mm -hmm. like, let me look at the two bedrooms because yeah. we really, it was the first time that we were going on vacation with my son and his family. And so we all really wanted to be in the same unit. So I started looking at the two bedrooms. I was like, oh, whoa. Oh, <laughs> yep. Cash points for two beds. Yeah, man. Like, are you <laughs> kidding me? I can't afford that. Like, that's insane. Now we're talking like $7,000 for, a, I'm like, that's like a Ford Focus. Like, are you serious? No. Okay. <laughs> Ford Focus. So, this but is then not I also, we, were, we were there for um, like a whole, I'm trying to mute this chat. So um, we were there for like a whole week and I was just like, for us, we do like to eat out, but we also like to cook. Like after two or three days, mm -hmm. I can totally eat out. But after a while, like I need to, um, I, I, I need to, I'm trying to mute this chat because this annoying sound. You I just close it. Okay. Oh, I thought um, that was my email. I like closed down my no, email. No, no, it's like my Facebook and it's like blowing up and I'm like, oh, it's so crazy. Um, <laughs> After a couple of days, like we we like to sleep in, so we want to have breakfast, we want to have snacks, mm -hmm. we like to like make dinner like two or three nights. We need a home cooked meal, and so I was like, okay, we got to get a place with a kitchen. And I normally I have Wyndham timeshare, and we normally stay at Bonnet Creek, but I wanted to stay on property for this particular trip. Well, it's their birthday, I want to stay on property. And so I just bought DVC. I was like, it's just cheaper to just buy DVC. I'm going to buy DVC. <laughs> we stayed at Wilderness Lodge for a week. <laughs> we were able to get the cabins for two nights, which the cabin alone would have cost half of what I paid for my DVC contract. <laughs> so, <My God>. yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, yeah, we're doing it. So, and that's what we did. Like we ended up, be we, we became DVC because the, the, um, it, it just worked out to stay, you know, if we wanted to stay on property, but we've done like you, Amanda, and we've stayed off property too. Like when we go, when I go on Saturday, we're staying at Bonnet Creek. I mean, that's the only place off property that I'll stay because it's technically not Disney, but it's still in the bubble. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's still transportation to the parks and stuff. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Does it run pretty like consistently? And Well, they have a shuttle that takes you to Disney Springs. And then from yeah. Disney Springs, you can get mm -hmm. the Disney transportation right. to wherever. But typically, um, when we're staying at um, Bonnet Creek, what I end up doing is we have a car. So we just drive everywhere. Right. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'm definitely a stay off property. We d we've stayed on property. We've stayed at, we love the cabins. Um, we've stayed at um, All Stars. And we just recently stayed at Art of Animation, just me and my husband. We went on an adult only trip. And I've been wanting to get back to staying on property. You know, I want to get back in the bubble. So we did do our, you know, it was just us. We're like, oh, we can do a studio. We can do it, just us. But like, we were on top of each other, <laughs> even just me, you know, me and my husband. And it was such a long walk to the lobby. And it just felt really inconvenient. And then the buses were so full and overcrowded. And we had to wait so long. And we're like, 
because we flew and we usually drive. That's the big thing. So we usually drive with our own car. So that's a big, I think that's a big difference of staying off property mm -hmm. because when you're, you know, stuck in the Disney bubble, you don't really need a car. Yeah. But I like that. I like having a car because then we can drive, you know, just go to Orlando and get dinners and nights. Mm -hmm. um, but Airbnbs are our favorite because we get a pool and we get, everybody gets a bedroom and we get a kitchen and we can cook and... And then we sometimes we don't even drive to the parks we Uber because it's it's really cheap to Uber, and they drop you off. You don't have to worry about parking. They drop you off right at the front. Um, you don't have to worry about you know taking the bus. It's just it's so much more convenient for us, I think, and we're just more because we with, we want to be on vacation. We want to have the pool to ourselves. And another thing, you know, um, Chris mentioned like. We still do get to go to the resorts because we make reservations at the resorts. We'll make our dining mm -hmm. reservations there and and then kind of use that to explore, walk around, get to the other resorts and walk around and still get the feel of the resorts without staying there. So Heather, I have a quick question. Can you give us a sense of like currently pricing for say a value resort, a moderate resort, deluxe resort just kind of like a range i know like it depends on when you go how many people are going how many days you're staying if you're getting a discount but just kind of like on average if you're not going during prime time or necessarily low time kind of like mid-season what can a family of say four look to spend at each of those different levels staying on property so right now normally there is a promo out this time of year usually anyways but right now they have the whole um get two days free and it is blowing away even even the 30 percent discount that they offer to deluxes right now so right now i'm gonna say um yacht club is about the best uh price wise in terms of if you want to stay deluxe plus you're gonna have access to stay um at the beautiful pools so you're gonna get storm along bay and like just walk walkable access to Epcot. Those ones usually, if you're going to go for a week with a family of four, you're probably anywhere between, depending on the view of the room, between like 47 to like 5,300. And that's going to get you two extra days of tickets. So like, say you were going to pay for three, you're going to get five. So you're going to be on the lower end. Say you wanted five, but you're there for eight days. You're going to end up with seven days worth of tickets. Um, in terms of moderates, uh, Caribbean Beach, the only one that's offering it, like that has availability that's going to save you money if you want to be on the Skyliner, you would have to stay in like the pirate room. Those ones are coming in like the mid 3000s, but, and here's the key because Amanda just made a very good point how she said Art of Animation, like she didn't like how the buses were taking so long and the lobby so far away. The best kept moderate secret on Disney property, hands down, is Coronado Springs. And right now, mm -hmm. Coronado rooms are pricing about the same as a pop preferred room. And those mm -hmm. rooms are huge at Coronado, like your standard rooms. They're big. I mean, yeah. and they're gorgeous. They just refurbished them, I want to say. I don't know if it was two years ago or three years ago. I can't remember. And it's like a three Caballeros. I think it was theme. three years ago. We okay. stayed there like right when they were refurbishing them, which yeah, was also like if there are resorts being refurbished, yeah. that's yeah. a great yeah. time to stay there too because yeah. you can get really good and they discounts. Only give you like free stuff. So I yep. want to clear. That's another thing I have pins for. They gave us all free yep. pins every time we stayed at Coronado during the refurbishment. It's like the construction mm -hmm. zone. Mm -hmm. yep. And then yep. all that. Um, and then if you do your wow. value resorts, they're probably like, um, the high 2000, wow. like 2700, but right now, I mean, I just keep telling people the prices have never been lower. If you're okay with wearing a mask, go to Disney because you're going to be able, what would normally cost you like seven or $8,000? The Grand Floridian is pricing at like $5,300, which would normally be like a $7,500 stay. Right. It's just, it's nuts right now because they need people to come to the park. I mean, they lost a lot of money. Like when it, when it are those prices out. with tickets? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Nice. 
Yeah. And what's the base on the get free tickets? Is it a three day? You have to do at least a three, three day. day ticket. You have to do yeah. three day, and then whatever, whether you choose to do base or park hopper, whatever one you choose, it's going to add two extra days free for whatever those options that you pick. So as long as you do three, it'll give you five. If you pick four, it's going to give you six. Five is going to give you seven and so on. But it's totally worth it. I mean, and plus, like, to stay at Yacht Club for the price that it's coming up now and to have Stormalong Bay and not have Beach Club completely full. So, like, that pool is not overcrowded. Yeah. It's amazing there right now. Yeah. And like, But I didn't mention that. I stayed in these cabins for a ridiculously low rate, which is why I was like, oh, well, then we're staying at the cabins. Because yeah. the cabins were, I mean, we don't need the three days because we're pass holders, but we got like 30% off of like here, I think. It was either like 20 or 30, but it was like ridiculous wow. how cheap they were. That's awesome. Thanks for giving us all those prices. I didn't mention that we are staying in an air, five bedroom private pool Airbnb for $900 oh, for a week. See? Yeah. So a yeah. <laughs> great price. A studio, right. <laughs> one bathroom. Yeah. We got three bathrooms, you know. That's what and that's the, the only thing for you us. have to do is your tickets every time. And the yep. tickets, yeah. But with the mm -hmm. you know, and then we usually not pass right. Mm -hmm. We're not pass holders, yeah. 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 But yeah I mean that's and that's one thing forward. to like and they come back to with the dining plan. If you if you stay off site, then no, the dining plan's not an option. Like right. that's mm -hmm. there there are certain like trade-offs with things like that that you have to consider. Um, but I think, yeah, I think you just have to kind of prioritize what what's important. What, to you. Yeah, yeah. What's important to you on your mm -hmm. trip. Is space is important. Then. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If space is important, a uh, value resort at Disney for a family of four is not going to be your jam. No. No. <laughs> no. Like, it is, no. It is, I mean, not even the value resorts are fun. Like they are beautiful. Yeah. They are in the Disney bubble. If you want to be in the Disney bubble, like, like Danielle's saying they're staying at movies for 118 a night in May. It is your jam. You can do it. We like That's for me too. personally, yeah. and this is unpopular opinion. I look at these rooms at the, the value resorts and I'm like, they look like a days in on the inside. They're pretty, they're decorated, they have paintings, but right. I, like I have gotten to a foofy level of hotel stay. <laughs> and <laughs> You know, it, it's nice to know that there is an option for people who want to be on property, mm -hmm. but even that may be, you know, out of the budget for some people if you need to cook meals, like if you right. don't have the extra budget, because if you're not going to get the dining plan and you're staying on property, you have to factor in meals. So if yep. you don't have, you know, the budget for meals, then staying at an Airbnb may be the better option. Mm -hmm because you don't have to purchase as many meals in the park mm -hmm. and you can, you know, go back home for dinner. The other thing about staying off property though, is you're not as close because when you're on property, you hop on a bus Like we stayed at the poly. Right. I was like, oh, this is amazing. Like we're, you know, we're like right there. Yeah. We, see you know, it. Yeah. Time to go home. It was like, okay, for magic kingdom, like the boat is right. Well, there. Out. <laughs> well and I think like, that's really, that's huge. Like, especially if you're going for like any of the late night events, like when they have the Christmas party or the Halloween party or things like that, that's where you can get a lot of value out of staying at a place yeah. like Contemporary or Poly or Grand Flirting. Cause when you put in a long day in the park and then you're going to be there until midnight and now you have to make it back to your room. Mm -hmm. It is so nice to hop on the ferry or be able to walk like, and now with the uh, walkway open to Grand yeah. Flirting really you could walk to all three resorts it would Definitely. be a, a hike it's to get to the polynesian but but i mean yeah. how busy the buses are and the boats and the it's you know, so the it's time. Time. oh so like again like go back to a split stay you know even if you like want to hit up a halloween or christmas party or something like that and you know you're going to do a long day or a late night in magic kingdom and it's going to be busy like maybe splurge for one or two nights at one of those resorts and have that convenience. And same thing with like yacht and beach and boardwalk and Swan and dolphin. Those are awesome. If you're knowing you're wanting to do Epcot or if you're wanting to do Hollywood studios. So we, I mean, we have gotten to a point now where that's how we plan our trips where we're like, what do we want to do? And then we will like resort hop to strategically like have the convenience of that. And, it's inconvenient because you got to pack up your stuff and move around, but the
the convenience yeah. of being able to walk back to your room and it takes 10 minutes at the end of a long day is a hundred percent worth it. So and and we'll do a packing video at some point. So we'll tell you all the tips that you need to make that mm -hmm. going from one place to the next mm -hmm. super yeah. easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. yeah. Yeah. I know yeah. it sounds like in your head, you're like, I read moving around every two days. Yeah. Like, really? <laughs> but it's, it's not as hard, even with a bunch really of kids, not. Like, it's not that hard. No. It's easier than it sounds. Yeah. It and does, yeah. Irene, you do have a good point with that because I have a lot of clients that own, um, they have like Marriott points. Mm -hmm. So they yeah. will stay at like Swan and Dolphin because if most of you don't know, that resort is not owned by yep. Disney. Um, and they'll use it and then they'll say, okay, but like either they'll start their trip or they'll end their trip and, and say, yep. we want to do a deluxe resort. Can we book the deluxe portion like f through you and do our tickets through you? And I'm like, yes, absolutely. And like some people get to knock off those bucket list stays like at the Grand Floridian or at yeah. the Polynesian because they're using their points, their Marriott points at the Swan and Dolphin. And it's no different mm -hmm. than people that have like timeshares. Like you guys are saying, hey spend $900, stay at an Airbnb, and then, hey, if you want to end it at the end of your trip and yeah. stay at the Poly and watch the fireworks from your balcony, do it. Yeah, and do it for one or two nights and then mm -hmm. and then take advantage of being at a deluxe resort because I mm -hmm. think that's the one thing that, like, can be a huge, like, budget thing. Like, if you're looking at, I'm not going to pay this much money to stay at a deluxe resort when I'm prioritizing going into the parks. Like, stay value or stay off property or, you know, do a timeshare or something like that or Airbnb and then literally like go stay two nights at a deluxe resort, but stay at the resort and enjoy the resort. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I'm sort of welcome in team J team Jake. Welcome. Yeah. Good to have you. You okay, John Claire? No, yeah. I just got a mouse dining alert that there's a Topolino's Terrace reservation available. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, no. I gotta see if I can get this. Yes. Yeah, I have that. I have that going for um, Oga's Cantina. Oh, I gotta get into yeah. that. Take it their alerts are so slow, though. Their alerts are so slow. So yeah, yeah. and if the it's time get on, it's gone. Click on the link, it's like gone. Yeah. I get like the little mm -hmm. notification. It's like, oh no, puppy eyes, you missed it, and I'm like. <laughs> We, we can't book our dining yet, and it's, like, killing me, but I'm, like, we're close. We're close. We're into the, like, three-month countdown now. I'm, like, the 60-day business is killing me. I cannot handle it. <laughs> um, Carol, it's going to be 180 days. Yeah. I miss Carol. 180 days. My life was so much oh, easier when it was 180 days. Yeah. Now clients are, like, okay, when's my 60-day mark? And I'm just, like, ooh. Because then if something opened up, I had time and like alerts and everything set up to notify me where like there was like a five month window where one of those things could open up. Now it's like, you got like 59 days. <laughs> this is what happens when you miss it. <laughs> I was like, I got so excited. And you know, I'm a little upset because I actually paid like the extra to get text alerts mm -hmm. and not email mm -hmm. alerts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just I like this point that Carol made about you know prioritizing a longer stay over nicer rooms yep. and meals. If you eat one meal in the park she, and then a cheaper meal at Pop and have a breakfast late night snack in the room, mm -hmm. yep. yeah, the cart. Yep, got a lot. We, we just did. Like, we just went and picked up like chips and stuff like to have mm -hmm. snacks here in the room. Yeah. Yep. Well, and I think that's like a big piece with like when you talk about dining plan, you talk about where to stay, like. I think you really have to understand like what's a priority to you. Like, do you want to be there more days? Do you want to do more park time? Do you, you right. know, you, if you're like, I want to spend three days at the pool, you know, then probably you should stay at like a, a moderate or a deluxe resort. But if mm. you're planning on putting most of your time in, in the parks and the hotel room is a bed to sleep in at the end of the day, mm. like stay value, you know, yeah. you're not really going to, get get your money's worth if you're staying at a moderate or deluxe resort if you're literally coming back there to sleep and that's it you know mm -hmm. so i think it's, it's know which grocery delivery service do you use she put in i want to know which one yeah we i mean we usually use that garden grocers garden that's what grocer. we typically use yeah. um but we've also used amazon Mm -hmm. both worked. I've never done Instacart down there, but we were thinking don't do Instacart. Doing, like, I don't I don't recommend Instacart. Yeah. The prices are so inflated. You already pay to use Instacart and the prices are really inflated. Like I get yeah. that you may be paying for convenience, but 
I, I, when it comes to like groceries, like I'm just not giving you a markup, especially when it's I like, like yeah. I know I can get if I just go pick it up myself. Oh, they use she uses shipped. shipped. Yeah. yeah, never heard of that I one. Tried, I haven't tried shipped in um in Florida yet. We we've done it here because I was super excited because they had like a free shipped at Target, and so I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> I put this order, and then I like. I realized I had to tip the person and I was like, wow. Yeah, so like, I didn't save any money because Aww. I literally could have just gone and like because Target, you can like order and just like drive up, pick up. Right. That's like what was I too. paying for to have delivered to my house? Target is like <laughs> literally a seven minute drive from my house. I do not have somebody to deliver it. So but if you're staying like on a resort and you're not having to pay for shift, then it might be worth it. Yeah. Um, does anyone else in the chat have any more questions about, um, you know, where to stay and how to save money that way? Or are we ready to move on to our next question? I think we're ready. So my question was, um, is Memory Maker worth your budget? Is Memory Maker worth the money? Um, Let me go. go first? <laughs> Heather, you ready to go first? Oh, God. I see you laughing. <laughs> So I, I have a love hate relationship with memory maker right now, just right now during the pandemic, because if someone is on your ride and they take their mask off on the ride or it flies yeah. off, that photo is not coming to you. And then you have to email photo pass to say, here's the time that I was there can you find me? And then they ask for another photo that you took like during that trip and they like ask what park you're in and all that kind of stuff. And then now they're doing a thing where it's a test pilot thing where they go in and then you have to pick up which one is your photo. And it's like super inconvenient right now huh. because of people that think that once they get on the ride, it's okay to take their mask off. And they're making it so much harder on other people that are just like trying to get their vacation memories. Right. That being said, as a single mom, I am never in the photos <laughs> ever because there's no other person that's going to take them for me. So for me, I mean, it's factored into our annual pass. I'm mm -hmm. in all the photos because I just walk up to a photographer and have mm -hmm. it done. If you are doing it for a short stay, I do not think that is worth yeah. it. If you are right. staying for four days or longer, then I believe that it is worth it. Yeah. But during this pandemic, I am like, I, I, I'm April. just not happy about it because everybody is just not following the rules and it's just a headache to try to get your photos because someone decided to take their mask off. That's all. I would say even now there aren't as many photographers out there. for photos to make it worth mm -hmm. it. Like pre pandemic, I definitely Everywhere. thought it was mm -hmm. worth it. But I, I guess in one of the things I would say, since we're talking about budgeting is, you know, memory maker is, um, it comes with your annual pass mm -hmm. along with some other perks. So if you have like a big enough party, it may even make sense for one person to get mm -hmm. the annual pass. Yeah. So then you get the memory maker, you get parking. If you're, if you have a rental car and you, you have all of the other, you have the discount and you have all the other little perks that come with it, but you don't get the pass for everybody. Um, it, it, it makes sense um, yeah. because it's like two hundred dollars, and you know the pass is what the pass is. <laughs> yeah. But I, I found like that that can be if especially if you're going to take more than one trip in a in that one year window, having at mm -hmm. least one person have the pass um, can also help save you money if you're on the fence about like whether or not to get Memory Maker. Like I wouldn't get it now during the pandemic just because it's the same price as it was before and there mm -hmm. are far fewer photo ops i mean there's still like the main ones like you see but the last time we were there like all of the normal spots where you would see a cast member taking photos they weren't there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah because there used to be like seven photographers going down main street and now there's right. only like two yeah and i get yeah. it they and i get yeah. it for pandemic reasons, obviously. But I mean, even a lot of my clients, they'll say like, should we get Memory Maker? And I'm like, even though you're getting a discount paying $169 for it, for right now, I don't think it's worth it because there's just not as many people out there to take 
the photos for you and then you have to search down for your ride photos right if some idiot like took their mask off on seven dwarfs mine train that's all what's a legacy ap mark acts if the memory maker is still in i think he's saying like if you had an ap and you can renew because you're in their legacy ap program is oh. it included on renewals it is included on renewals Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. I mean, that's the only experience. Well, okay. So we, we got it one time free. Like when we took my niece, we had memory maker added on for free and that was like our first experience using it. And we have like thousands of pictures from that trip. Whereas when we took my nephew, we had like 20 pictures that we had taken. And <laughs> like, you know, in the era of like, you know, digital cameras still evolving and it wasn't on our phones yet. Right. Um, but we then we were annual pass holders for two years, three years, two years, I can't remember. But when we had that, then we had Memory Maker and we really loved having it. So we kind of got used to the convenience of having it, but um, we're on the fence about it for our trip coming up. I'm just not sure. Like because because we're doing a split stay too, like it's our that's gonna be kind of all over the place. And then just with all the pandemic stuff, I just don't know if it's going to be worth it. I mean, it is really fun to have ride photos and like Wally's going to be tall enough to ride Everest. So it's going to be his first time riding Everest and kind of having those, like those memories of being able to have that. over yeah. the years. Um, I will say that too, that if you do invest in it and especially if you have little ones, like you really need to strategically know where to sit for it to be worth it too. Like if you're doing frozen ever after wait for the front row or you're not going to see your kid at all because <laughs> short. Um, and same thing with like pirates, you know, if you want to get the photo on that. So I think it, I think it can be worth it, but I think you have to, again, like prioritize taking pictures too on your trip. Like every time you see a photo pass photographer, stop yeah. a picture. Um, and then, yeah, ride photos can be, like, even pre-pandemic, my nephew, like, you know, flashed some sign on Haunted Mansion and, like, we couldn't get our picture because he was, like, being a stupid teenage boy, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. like, being mindful of that and that can happen, like, even on, like, Splash Mountain, if there's one dumb kid in the party <laughs> on there that decides to do something, like, that can nix you getting your whole photo and, like, they won't even release them at all if there's certain things like i don't know how they're now if like right now they'll like allow it if somebody doesn't have a mask but i know like no if you, like but if your things. car say say you know how like mind train is really the one that like gives people a lot of problems because they're taking videos as that's moving and right. then still still photos so if someone that's sitting two behind you has their yeah. off it'll cut off your entire car, even though your car has right. all of them on. <sighs> so, I mean, I mean, but Calissa was on test track one time and like that thing goes so fast, her mask like flew off. Right. So I mean, yeah. it happens. Right. But like, and I just like grabbed it when it was like in midair, like, oh my gosh. So I mean. Weren't they doing a thing where they just like put faces on the people that weren't wearing masks? I mean, they did that for a little bit. They tried that out and yeah. that didn't last long. I mean, so I, when I entered today, the facial recognition machines, which Ajana Claire, I'm curious to see what you think of them whenever you get here. The facial recognition machines are up. Wow. Whenever you're going into the parks. Oh, wow. That's going to be yep. interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, it's so interesting. the mask on? In yep. Disneyland, Disneyland has always taken your picture when you come in. Like that's always been how they've validated your ticket. If you have a multi-day ticket, they don't do fingerprints or anything there. So they've used like, but it's not facial recognition. Like they just literally old school and you scan it. They like look to see if it's mm -hmm. you. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see. April, that's definitely worth the splurge, I think, for Emma's first trip. Yeah, I think if it's yes, first trip. trip. Yeah. It's definitely worth it. First yeah, trip, I would just say find out trip. where the photo pass people are. Like, try yeah. to watch vlogs, try to figure out where the photo pass people are, and maximize getting your photos because it's not just the ride photos that you're going to want. You're going to want photos around the park. 
Yeah. And same for rushing to Disney. It's Jameson's first trip too. Make sure you get it. It's worth it. I mean, I think even just when you have little ones, I don't know. I mean, we probably, we'll probably end up getting it when we go in July. Just Yeah, you will. I don't want to miss those memories with <laughs> Molly and being able to capture like the first time on rides and, you know, but, and who knows what will be there come July either, but. Yeah. And they have some of those really cool ones too, where they'll do the yeah. like, zoom photos where they have the like cameras that are really far away and then they'll like zoom in yeah. and zoom out. And those are really, really cool. And I think they just added one animal kingdom with that. Oh, I yeah. And they that. put one in Hollywood studios too. Yeah. We've done the one in magic kingdom and that was like such a cool picture. So mm -hmm. just when they do like special things like that, I feel like it's totally worth it. I don't know. Yeah, like at Haunted Mansion when they have the ghosts right next to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I love that. <laughs> Especially like at the parties too. They'll do like all kinds of special. Like, Those party photos overlays. are amazing. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, do you think it's worth like, it? I need to actually start using my, like, I don't even think on our last trip. Okay. I'm going to make sure we do photo pass on this trip. Cause we have it. I have like a platinum pass. And so we clearly have it. I just, I didn't even think about it because I was like vlogging the whole time. And so I'm always having the camera in front of me. So I didn't think that, you know, we need to get extra photos. So that's going to be a part of this trip. We're gonna get photos. And I'm going to be in the picture. Moms be in the picture. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's why moms like love it because we need to be in the picture. Like Heather said. Yeah. 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 And that we always get it. We always do it because I the other I, I just don't like having my phone out all the time. I want to not have to have my phone out, especially now that we have to worry about fast passes. Just keep the phone away, live in the moment. Have someone else do the work, take the picture, and mm -hmm. they still, will they still take your picture? Like take your device and take pictures right now, or is that something no. they're not doing? No, no, okay. no. no. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, in that sense, during COVID, it may be even more so worth have yeah. them photo pass. I mean, because they would always do that where even if you didn't have photo pass, like the photographers would still snap a picture with your device. And if they're not doing mm -hmm. that now, I don't know. Then I think I think it makes an even stronger argument for getting photo pass right now. Yeah, definitely. Um hi read pray love welcome in. Yeah. So we're talking budget and um those are <laughs> <laughs> oh, we pray Disney. I said we pray love. You're thinking about the book. <laughs> I love that book. Is that what your name's good, based yeah. on? <laughs> um, but um, so do we want to, because Irene has a really great question, but I feel like it could take up another whole show. Yeah. So I don't know, do we want to keep wait, save your question for another show or you do the giveaway or do we want to just go for it? What do you guys think? We can do like an abbreviated version, like, like just your okay. top. Top tip. Just one tip. All right. So, Irene, what's your question? So, my question is what is your one top tip for saving money on a Disney trip? One so, tip. So, John Claire, do you want to start? Yeah. Disney gift cards. I buy mm -hmm. them at either Target for 5% off. So, if you figure a $500 gift card, you're getting $50 off right off the top. And that's $500 to spend in the park. Um, or, even better if you go to Sam's and you're using a reward card with like 2% cash back or 2% points or something like that, you're getting the Sam's Club discount plus the 2% on your credit card. Or if you go when they have, um, if you have like a Chase card like or a Discover card with 5% and they have the warehouse uh, category for 5%, you mm -hmm. basically get the discounted gift card at Sam's Club or Costco or BJ's plus the 5% cash back um, plus the 1%. So it's a total of 6% because it's 1% on all purchases plus 5% bonus. So you can save a good 8%. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but off a $500 gift card, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's a lot of money. Yeah. Good one. That's my one tip. That's a good tip. What about you, Heather? Sorry, I was on mute because like my entire family, they're just like, I think they're getting impatient. So <laughs> I am with Claire 110% with the um, Disney gift cards. Uh, 
I that's me hands down. And also, kind of like going back to our whole Disney dining plan thing. If you decide that you don't want the dining plan and you always have to budget for food, you buy the Disney gift cards at the discounted places ahead of time, and you can use those to pay for your food. Um, my number one tip, though, is that I never buy beverages in the park, ever, mm -hmm. because I carry around a Yeti with a crossbody strap, which I was telling the ladies about, I think it was like after we were done, last week, mm -hmm. and I was like, listen, this is like the first thing that I pack in my suitcase, and I literally carry around a Yeti with me all day long, because I refuse to pay and or use a snack credit for any kind of pop or anything in the park. And ice water is free in Disney, so um, we should probably put a link in about this cool carrier that I have. Yes, so I always have yeah. Disney gift cards and you need the Yeti carrier and it will save you a ton of money on drinks when going yeah. to the park. Gift cards and Yeti. Yep. <laughs> Those are my go-tos. What about you, Irene? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think for us, like the biggest thing we do to save money on a trip is doing groceries and like making meals in our room. So we will like have granola bars and goldfish crackers and all those things so that we're not like spending money on snacks in the parks mm -hmm. and we'll get bottled water and sodas and like we'll even get like some like sangria wine and bottles of wine for the room at night. And then that just like saves some money where it's like, when we get back to the room at night, we can have a glass of wine before we go to bed and we're not spending excess money on cocktails or things in the parks. Um, and then just like, just, I don't know, bringing things with you too, like ponchos. Like we always have like, you know, ponchos, we have things to charge our phone with. So we're never having to like pay for the fuel rods or things like that. So I think for me, it's like being very strategic in my pre trip planning on what I'm packing and then putting together a really thoughtful grocery order. So we have things to keep us like going throughout the day and we're not just getting tempted to spend money on snacks and things that we just don't need. Yep. My, my tip is actually going to be your tip for sure. <laughs> I had the same one in mind, but another tip I have is um, buy your, like your Disney merch ahead of time, you know, yeah. that you want to give the kids, yep. you know, it's the Disney outlet and go shopping there. And I got all my shirts for Disney. So I'm not buying shirts there. I got my yep. ears. I got the kids shirts. I got them, you know, plushies and then give it, give it to them at Disney. Mm -hmm. Then you're not paying Disney prices for the Disney merch, which can be very expensive. For sure. I mean, you're gonna have to buy one thing, but because yeah. you can't leave without one thing. But at least you're not buying tons of tons of things. Um, anything else from the chat? Any more questions about thing about budgeting? We're getting requests for that link, Heather. I know. <laughs> 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 okay, I'll find, it. I'll find it in my Amazon cart because I like buy it for my clients and stuff. Yes, I'll find like it. Is it from Expedition Everest. So we will <laughs> put it in the chat. We'll, we'll drop it in the description. Yeah. Um, Carol had a really good tip too on using your Disney Chase Visa. Yes, That's another thing that we do, like we have the Disney cards. And, yeah. We do too. Um, and you can also like it can be a great way to like budget for your trip because if you book your whole Disney trip using a Disney visa, you have six months to pay it off with zero percent. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so that's a great way to like budget and be able to pay for a trip over six months. And then you do then you also turn around and get money back because you're earning rewards yep. for paying for your trip. And then you get those gift cards and can use them in the park. And you so. get like 15 percent off at some yep. places, some yeah. restaurants mm -hmm. and so always well, even the I Disney always store, have. like we went to our Disney store that was closing here. And so everything in the store is 50% off and they let us use our Disney visa card and take an extra 10% off. 10% yeah. off. Yeah. Huge. It all so, adds up. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot you can and do. And I use reward trip. points for Disney cruise. Yeah. That's, that's what, that's what that visa is for. Like those rewards points, that's what pays for the cruise. <laughs> yep. There you go. I love how my husband just called me out on this. Why I do all these budgeting tips and then and going to go to Disney and spending all the money because <laughs> we're Disney fanatics. It's what we do. Right? <laughs> Listen, we want Probably everybody to be able to go and budgeting. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, it's like a once in a lifetime trip. So 
We're going to yeah. tell you all the ways that you can like save money and make it happen. Right. Especially yeah. if you want to stay on property, if it's like your one time only, yeah. there's a bunch of tips that we can like share over a bunch of episodes. that will be like, we will get you there. And the other right. tip is like, never, ever go and pay full price. Always go during a promo. If you want to stay on property. Yeah. Like, I mean, unless your go. dream is to go on Christmas yeah. day and be there with, 50 million of your closest friends. Mm -hmm. Like never <laughs> again. Like, right? Never unless, again. <laughs> yeah. I do, and it never, really ever right again. again. Trust me. Like, so don't don't do the Christmas, but like other than that, like go when there is a promo because some of those promos can save you so much money, especially whenever the free dining. Oh, free yeah. dining saves people. Yeah, so if they have any like promos and that and I I'll make a plug for you, Heather. Like use a travel agent because they know what promos are going on. And one of the things I love about it is you can rebook. So like if if you book something and then Disney drops a promo and you're using a travel agent, like they are so on it. Like Heather will get get it taken care of for you. Yeah, so I usually you're the best value. And we kind of know ahead of time what's coming out. And I usually just email all the clients at like 5 a.m. And I'm like, here, your package just went down by like $800. And they're like, oh, my God. And I'm like, yeah, I was up at four and I applied it. Like, <gasps> right. Like, yeah, there's a reason. Like, yeah. you should just yeah. use an agent. It'll just It'll make your make life easier. Life I mean, especially if you're like, if you're going for the first time or this is a like once in a lifetime trip or you want to go once a year and you are somebody that's going to stay on property, like just use a travel agent and make your life so much easier. And really, truly, you will end up saving money using them and you don't pay anything either. I mean, when I so that's how Heather and I met is I was a travel agent for for a hot second. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but it, but it's a lot of work and it mm -hmm. was too much it's a lot of work. balance for me. Um, but I mean, that was one of the things I was like most shocked to learn is that it's free. Like I was like, what the heck, how come I haven't been using a Disney travel agent all these years? Like, I didn't know it was like, there's no cost to use them. And then they're going to rebook things for you and handle all your dining and handle all your fast passes and know all the promos and give you all the tips and send you packing lists and all this stuff. And you're not paying anything for it. So, I mean, honestly, I would say like that is a money saving tip too, especially if you're like new to Disney or going for the first time or just don't want to have to do all the planning and thinking, Yeah, you know? Oh, um, reprint Disney. That's a very good point. The yeah. military yeah. do the tickets post. Yes. From shades. Yes. Of Green and if you are military, do not buy your memory maker ahead of time. When you get to the park, go straight to guest services. You will get it for $99. What? And if, mm -hmm, if you are military. And if you, um, if you want to stay on property and you don't want to stay at Shades of Green, um, the resorts have military rates that come out usually at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. Um so you can even stay on property at a significantly discounted rate. And yeah, we book that too for military families. Disney yeah. loves the military. If you've ever watched the flag ceremony. Yes. Oh, tears. Tears. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No. But I mean, I think it's like a lot. We've been so many times, like everybody in this group. But the reason we can go so many times is because we are like paying attention to all the like budgeting tips and deals. And like it is something that we spend a lot of time before every trip, like really like strategically analyzing things and looking yeah. at what we can do. What's going to be is it going to be the better deal to get the dining plan or not? And so I think it's it is wise to kind of know all the little tips and tricks along the way. Mm -hmm. And figure out how to kind of milk the system as much as you can, mm -hmm. you know. That just reminded me that Swan and Dolphin does do um teacher discounts too. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, we got I think we got 15% off when huh. we booked at Swan and Dolphin because I'm a teacher. Yeah. Hmm. So. <laughs> like maybe we should add on some days at Swan and Dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> it's so beautiful there. It is. It really is yeah. just like being on Disney property. Yeah. Yeah. And since we're talking about budgeting. I will talk about my budgeting shame. You must Ooh. also pay attention to everything. So when uh, when we booked our annual passes, I bought the platinum pass for myself because it comes with the maximum benefits and we only needed one platinum pass. And for my mom and so well, I got them the gold pass, which is a, a level of pass, but it has blackout dates. And I looked mm -hmm. at the blackout dates and I'm like, I will never travel on blackout dates. We're never coming back on Christmas over like Christmas 
between Christmas and New Year's. And we're not going to travel during spring break. Like we're never going to do that. And so when we booked this trip, I was like, okay, you know, my son is on spring break. So we're going to have to go during his spring break. Well, that's still Disney spring break and it's blackout. Mm. So even though my mom and Zoel have annual passes, I still had to buy tickets for them because uh, of the days that were there are blackout days. And so only like the last day that we're there. So I, you, you do have to pay, like if you're going to get like discount, like we saved a lot of money, but I just basically killed that savings that we yeah. had on our passes by booking a trip during a blackout day. Like I literally would have gone the following week had I had I paid attention to yeah. those things. You do have to pay attention to those things. I would like pulled my son out of school for a week to go the yeah. following week and save money. Like I have no problem pulling my kids out of school for vacation. No. I like to give them the education of life. A unpopular opinion maybe, but if you if you're I I a parent and you. <laughs> school during school breaks, you're never going to save any money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because correct. those are the times where like even for the military, Disney loves the military, but not the last two weeks of December. Okay. Correct. <laughs> 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 yeah. After when we went, like my son was they had a great rate, but because we were going from like December twenty eighth through January third, like there was no discounts to be had. Because they know if people want to be there during that prime time, they're just going to pay what they pay. Yeah. Um, so no, like it really depends on when you go. So yeah, pull your kids out of school. <laughs> yep. Except for us teachers, right, Carol? Right. <laughs> I love. It. She says, "How did I know?" And then Chris says, "That's why you join these chats, Carol. That's why we're here to give you guys the best." That's the only thing I like is our my school. Like our spring break is always like the first week in March, so it's early enough that it's like kind of not spring break season. Yet. So, yeah, it's like one advantage of our school districts out here yep. is that we're earlier. Mm -hmm. But. I know I was thinking that when you were at the Gaylord, I'm like, wow, their spring break is so early. Yeah, we were like, we're long gone done with spring break. Like so we'll, we'll be going to Disney during our spring break this year. We're nervous to see how busy it's going to be. We go in two weeks. Yeah, like, I didn't even realize wow. Sunday was Easter Sunday. I was like, oh my God, I should have known that that would have been a blackout date. Like we are literally <laughs> going to be at Disney on Easter Sunday. Like what oh. was I thinking? I know. No Welcome idea. Welcome in now. Do you, um, Heather, do you know if you can do both teacher and military discount yeah. or do you have to pick like one or the other? You usually have to pick one because yeah. it's no different than even the promos. You can't stack the promos. Yeah. It's just which one, um, which one's going to save more money. And that's usually what you have to pick. Military, military gets a ridiculous discount. And I know yeah. that this isn't, this isn't, this is just Disney, but I mean, military gets a ridiculous discount on Universal as well. Mm. So, mm. I mean, yeah. All right. Are we ready to do the giveaway? Yes. I'm, ready to do the I'm giveaway. so excited. <laughs> so, just a reminder as part of the giveaway, you're getting. These beautiful ears made by Chelsea from Chelsea Stone Creations. Check her out if you haven't yet. She has an Etsy page. Got the Jim Shore. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. You're getting an ornament and a mug from me, but I'm in Disney. So You're I'm on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> and this for me. Oh, yes. Still so in the plastic. <laughs> Hi, Mike. Yeah, Welcome in. Tomorrow. <laughs> Um, and what were the rules for this giveaway? You have to be subscribed to all four of us. Yes. Oh, I love your shirt, Jonna Claire. I know. It's oh, fabulous. I know. This is my fancy shirt. <laughs> you said that, and I was like, oh my gosh, I love that. Yeah. Um, you had to be subscribed to all four of us. You had to join our first live stream. And if you didn't get to join, um, at least leave a comment, mm -hmm. a replay. And then our second one as well. And got bonus entries for going onto our Instagram and liking those posts and um, commenting there as well. Yeah. So we put everyone's name in here. If you got the bonus ones, we put you in for each bonus you got. Oh, I'm so nervous. Look at them all. I'm so excited to see who wins. Thank you for everyone who joined. We are so excited that, to do this. Yeah. It's just it's so much fun. A lot of fun. Mm -hmm. All right. Should I do it nice and slow to build the anticipation? <laughs> 
Great. Right. This is the winner. Oh. It is Life Joyfully Done. Oh, oh. And they're in Disney right now. They're in so Disney she's right probably now. Not on the chat because they're in Disney World right That's now. That's so awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, I bet they're going to be so excited. <laughs> Even a messenger. That's awesome. Yeah, you'll have to let her know. But we will be doing another giveaway. So, are we gonna are we gonna hint to what our next theme is? I don't know. Maybe we should give like clues. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good idea. Yeah. So yeah, so we're doing Women of Disney. So like every every quarter, we're gonna be doing a giveaway that highlights a woman of Disney. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we can. So we're cooking something up. <laughs> uh -huh. That's a good one. That's that a good one. So <laughs> We're cooking up some ideas for the giveaway. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, any 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 uh, guesses in the chat of who which lady we're doing? Just based on that clue. Ooh. I wonder if they can guess based off one clue. Yeah, I'm trying to think if like I could come up with another clue that wouldn't give it away. I'm really bad at giving clues. <laughs> oh, read, pray, Disney. Oh, she got it. She, she got, got it. it. Yeah. One clue. <laughs> Oh, wrong. <laughs> it's Tiana. Yeah. Yay. Chelsea couldn't guess because she knows because she's going to make us some ears. <laughs> <laughs> well, when and you first I was like, I, I was like, like wait, what to tell her doing? that she won the giveaway. She's like, shut up. <laughs> yeah, awesome. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yay. <laughs> yes. Well, so. Mark's wondering if he won. <laughs> yeah, you did not. Oh, good. Melly Mel got it and Aileen. Good job, guys. Yay. So, yeah, we'll have more details on that on our next live stream. Which is um, when? Oh in two goodness. weeks over on Heather's channel, which is. Oh, sweet what? Lord. Heck. <laughs> Heck April 15th is on tax day. Yeah, it's on oh, wow. tax day. Well, it's old tax yeah. day, I guess. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. It'll be fine. It's going to be great. Yes. That'll be right before our trip. We'll be leaving that either Friday night or Saturday. Oh my gosh. I'm so jealous. Of, like, right there. There. No, <laughs> you guys are all going to be there in April. I like, I literally, I think who just booked it? You just booked a trip, man. I think you guys, like you just booked yours. And then I was like, Mark, can we change our dates? Again? Well, <laughs> we're going in July too. So we'll see. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we're just like, we're holding yeah. out. Well, it'll be good. We're, we're going to Omaha instead. This month. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Our exciting <It's> fun. <laughs> well, I was on the fence about renewing our passes, but they told me that um, they are renewing passes. And since they're not issuing new passes, new ones, yeah. I am definitely going to renew our passes just mm -hmm. to I know. Yeah. keep them. And if I renew yeah, our we... passes, I'm going to see how long this, how bad this drive is when we go this weekend. Because I may just pop down to Disney for a day or two. Yeah. <laughs> you come down in July. Come in July. Yeah. Mother's going to be there. Man's yep. going to be there. No pressure. You should come. <laughs> I should. And we could do a live stream from Disney. Mama Mouse Club. Oh, that would yeah, be like so Epcot. fun. Mama Mouse Club drinking margaritas. I mean. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks, Carol. I, think we'll have Thanks to have have I cannot wait okay, to get back down. We'll have to coordinate it. Mel's going next week. At, oh, that's going to be so much fun. I can't wait. I'm so excited. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm kicking myself because we had an annual pass. Like we had bought one because we were supposed to go last uh, May. And so we had an annual pass and we were going to activate it on that trip. And then we ended up canceling because we're like, who knows when we're going to get back? Like, do we want to sit on an annual pass we can't use for a year? Like, how's this all going to play out? And I'm like, Dang it, we should have kept it, but oh, too late. It would have, should have. I know. <laughs> we'll, we'll still get the two free, free days on this trip, so uh -huh. that's, that's okay. good. Well, All right. Well, this was a great stream. we got to let Heather go be, enjoy Disney and let her kids yes. out of the room. <laughs> yes. They're, like, back there. I can hear them giggling. So, I mean, thank God that, like, they're being supervised right now, but Lord knows what's happening. <laughs> Well, enjoy your trip. Yes, enjoy. I miss the oh, cabins so much. In the cabins. I, figured I love that I got to see them. I figured them. out the loops. 
I'm not. I'm not good. Okay, I've been I'm dying to bring tech this. And I'm not I have a stick now. <laughs> Do it, girl. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay. I'm scared. I got water, cheers. but I'll see you. <laughs> and cheers to everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you to um, Rushing to Disney, Geeking Out Melly Mel, Carol, Aileen, everybody in the street chat tonight. You guys are so awesome. We love having yes, you. thank you guys for hanging out with us. And if you guys have any questions or if you have like any suggestions or topics you want us to cover, yeah. definitely let us know in the comments or let us know on Instagram. Yeah. I'm going to post an Instagram because I didn't realize there were so many um, Tiana lounge fly bags. So mm -hmm. I'm going to do an Instagram poll. Oh, you guys, are gonna, oh. you guys are going to determine which Tiana bag is part of the next Ooh, giveaway. I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can do an Instagram, like, um, add in any questions into the Instagram. Can you do that? Like, you can add questions into yeah. an Instagram. Yeah. 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 Awesome. We'll do a poll, and you guys will vote on which Tiana bag will be for the next giveaway. Thanks, Danielle. I'm sure that Danielle has all the Tiana bags already. <laughs> she has all but one. She's the only great one. <laughs> I'm all of in her collection. She's all but one. <laughs> Oh, yay! Thank you so much. It was so much fun. So fun, yeah. Right, bye, bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> bye. bye.